Now there's some really, really cool stuff we can do with the polypanes. In fact, uh, we will. Uh, but first, before we get into that, let's go out of edit mode, let's hit control N, and let's talk a little bit about alphas and their interaction with textures, because it's been updated in ZBrush 2020. So we're gonna grab out a plain 3D, go into edit mode, we'll go ahead and go to a white color, make poly mesh 3D. We have skin shader for material. And I have my standard brush, I have RGB on, uh, to go ahead and turn that on and I have Zad turned on. I'm gonna go into my stroke and I'm gonna tap L to turn my lazy mouse off or you can just click that button. And let's go to a drag rec stroke and we'll grab an alpha uh, arrow and in our texture, we'll just grab texture 15. So what we can do is we can just drag that out on our canvas. Let's go ahead and hit control D until we get up to about a million points. Your, your point count will probably be up here. About a million points. And you're gonna see while I'm sculpting, uh, let's switch over to, uh, for you guys will be matte cap gray. So while I'm sculpting over here, you're gonna see it kind of fades out towards the sides here. That's because I have my uh, my focal shift at zero. Make that negative 100 so you get a nice crisp edge. And now you're gonna see how uh, we get a nice clean result. So under subtool, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on uh, that paintbrush to turn on colorize. And now when I drag this out, you're gonna see I'm painting with my texture through my alpha onto my object and it's being clipped perfectly by that alpha. This was ZBrush's previous functionality and it's on by default. If you look right up here, you're gonna see that A is on. It says it says paint with alpha. And a lot of times that's that's really nice to have. In fact, if we go back to our crazy head here and we switch back to skin shader four, you know, I can just make a an arrow with this. This probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I can turn that texture off and then hold tap C and then we can go through here and now we can you know put a little arrow on there. If we just want to poly paint, we can turn off Z add. By going back to our plane here. If we do have a texture loaded, it's going to perfectly be punched out by that alpha. If you don't want that functionality, you can just turn off that A, and now you're gonna paint your entire texture, and your alpha is only going to affect your sculpt. So you can see my Z add is still working. In fact, if I hold down Alt, you'll see it's kind of punching in. If we turn off our poly paint, you can see that, you know, this is punching out and this is punching in, but the texture's being painted fully. And you might be thinking, well, you know, why would you want that? This seems like it's a much better deal. You're getting a much cleaner result. Um, we'll bring in another example. So in Substance Painter, you can export these things or using Texture XYZ and ZBrush, you can bring in like skin alphas along with their corresponding textures. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Texture Import. And for the texture, we're gonna bring in Female Elbow Skin. And then we'll also bring in this uh, Mole Base Color. For the Alpha, we'll import Female Elbow Skin. And then Alpha, Import, Mole Height. So in the texture, let's go ahead and start with the female elbow skin, and then for the alpha, we'll go with uh, female elbow skin as well. So we have an alpha with a corresponding texture. You're gonna see these two match up perfectly as far as our colors are concerned. So we still have drag rect. Now, if we turn alpha on and we drag this out on our canvas, you're gonna be like, okay, yeah, I'm getting um, that skin detail. And in order to kind of blend these together, I kind of like having a little bit of a fuzzier outline. So let's take this focal shift back down to zero, for example. So now you can see I'm dragging on skin and it's making the skin nice and bumpy. If I turn off, let's go ahead and go back to, well, we'll keep it on skin shader four, but you can kind of see, you know, I'm getting that skin texture that I like. And if you want to kind of tone that down, the Z intensity down a little bit, not the RGB, we'll go ahead and keep that at hundred, but the Z intensity, we can turn that down. So it's not quite so heavy. So we'll go ahead and, okay, we're dragging out skin and we're getting nice uh, skin bumps on there. Uh, but you're going to see the alpha, this alpha right here, where it's dark, it's cutting out the RGB information from the texture where it's light, it's letting it come through. When you're doing stuff like this, you kind of don't want that. That's not functionality that's uh, really gonna help you out. So let's go ahead and undo all that and let's turn off uh, the A button here. And now you're gonna see we're getting the nice skin bump detail and we're also getting the full texture information. Now this fading out that we have is due to our focal shift. Um, that's just the brush focal shift kind of fuzzing out the edges here. Which in this case, uh, I, I do want, that's not that's not terrible. So we'll go through here and we'll just kind of go through and drag on our skin detail here. Now again, you can use your uh, Z intensity to go ahead and dictate uh, how intense that is. If I turn off my poly paint, you're gonna see um, it's pretty bumpy. I can also go through here and I can, since it's a flat plane, I can scale in the Z and that'll knock down our uh, geometry intensity, so we'll go ahead and turn this back on. Uh, same thing for the mole. If we go in here and we grab a base color mole, and then we grab the height, the height information we want to be applied to our geometry, but we don't want it to dictate what color gets applied. We want all of the color and the height, we just want to dictate the Z add. So you can see we're turning that alpha off really comes in handy as we're dragging this out. In fact, we can crank that Z intensity up now. And now you can see we're getting a nice big mole kind of popping through our skin and then we're getting the texture around the mole. Of course, 
Um, you're going to want to make sure that the this skin tone matches the underlying skin tone if you're going to be painting in ZBrush, uh, but that's the result you can get. And of course, there's even cooler. You can go in here and grab uh, ins Infected or whatever this thing is. And as long as the height matches the texture, you can get some good results. Now these differences in skin tones kind of bothers me and we can f kind of fix that, but I'm going to talk about one more thing before we get there. I'm going to go out of edit mode, hit control N, and we'll go back into a plain 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, and again we'll just subdivide this up, up to about a million polygons. I'm going to bring in another example, so we're going to go to texture import, I'm going to bring in this rope small, and I just have the texture for this. Now if I try to drag this rope out uh, with standard brush, uh, number one, we got to go in here and turn on colorize, and it's going to be just drag rex. We're going to change this back to our dot stroke, and we're going to go over here to our stroke modifiers roll, and uh, the rope's going this way, so I need to rotate it. So I'm going to go in here to texture, rotate, and now the rope will kind of follow the brush stroke. So I can make a really, really cool rope, and I'll go ahead and turn off the Z-Ad because I just kind of want to paint this information. Now, I don't want this black being painted around it. I just want to paint the rope. So let's make a quick alpha. I'm going to take this texture. I'm going to say make alpha. So now I have the alpha here. However, when I start painting, I'm still getting black. So we got to say, okay, if I turn on this alpha, now the alpha is going to cut out my rope, which I want. But when I look closely, wherever it gets dark inside of the texture and I convert it to an alpha. So whenever that alpha gets dark now, it's cutting out my RGB information. I don't want that. So let's go in here to alpha modify and I'm going to crank that intensity up all the way so I'm basically getting pure white on my alpha now. So now when I compare this stroke I'm getting all of my RGB information and I'm not getting any black drawn around it. So now I can go through here. So now I've got a nice rope brush and uh, <laughs> if, I, if I knew how to write in uh, cursive anymore uh, I'd probably look a little bit better but now you can see how you can play alpha and texture and utilize those for all kinds of different situations uh, within ZBrush.